Hello, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's Pastor Peter Noble here from St. Martin's Lutheran Church in Gladstone. Um, also the pastor of uh, Calvary, Rockhampton and Living Waters, Yapoon. <laughs> had to think about that for a moment. And tomorrow's service is the Sunday the 9th of February. It's the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. And uh, the theme sermon, I'll be preaching on uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses uh, 1, to, 1 to 16. And the theme is titled, The Wisdom of God, uh, Christ Crucified. And it's based on particularly the first and second verses that um, where Paul basically says, uh, I did not come to you proclaiming you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And so that's basically the center of this text. That's the, that's the heart of it. And it's basically the big idea is that when we proclaim the gospel, that the gospel isn't proclaimed with um, lofty words. It's not proclaimed with um, words that are full of... Um, uh, slick, intelligent, uh, you know, um, cunning words, but they are words that are just very straightforward. They're very simple, and they proclaim Christ, cru Christ crucified at the heart of what we talk about with the gospel. That Jesus Christ, right here, that Jesus Christ. I can turn this thing a look here. That Jesus Christ, on a tree, crucified, that the Son of Man, fully God and fully man, crucified, is at the center of the gospel. And this good news that whoever has faith in um, Jesus Christ, um, that if they believe in him and confess him to be Lord and are baptized, then they will be saved and given eternal life. And so that's basically the guts of what I'll be preaching about this, this Sunday. Uh, if you want to come along to church, you would be most welcome. We meet at 8.30 a.m. and we meet at uh, 1 Chapman Street in Gladstone which is the, uh, the, the Seventh-day Adventist Hall that we utilize there. And I think that's pretty much it. Well, the other big thing that I'll be talking about is that um, those who receive the Spirit, Paul says um, that the world doesn't discern the things of God. It doesn't know um, that, that, that the wisdom that he imparts, which was hidden before the world began, that God reveals that to those who have his Spirit. And that he actually um, preordained it. That's that's one of the um, in the Greek. It's um, proorizo, so it's foreordained. And that it was. Uh, it says we impart a secret, hidden wisdom of God, which is decreed before the ages for our glory. Um, some English translations translate that f um, for our glorification. I think that's um, a fair, a fair one. But it's um, basically that we might be. Uh, God has glory, and He reveals it to us. Um, to um, by uh, grace. And so he keeps making this distinction between um, um, the people who have the mind of Christ and those who do not, that the world doesn't think like God thinks. Um, and so this wisdom that is um, secret and hidden from God is being revealed, and it's revealed to those who have the Spirit. Um, he says that this wisdom, he imparts it to the mature. Um, in Greek, you can translate it just as um, the mature ones. That this group of mature Christians that they that they receive this wisdom and this knowledge of God, and that they can discern things, and that if that uh, if the rulers of this age if they had have known this um, this wisdom then they would have seen Jesus for who He is. But um, we know that uh, I think specifically Paul's talking about um, directly, but without saying his name, he's talking about Pontius Pilate. But in one sense, that's all rulers of of, of all time. Uh, who don't know God, they they would see Jesus as um, foolishness. Uh, this that there's this man crucified on a cross that that is um, foolishness to those who don't have the spirit of God and don't discern the mind of God. He uh, he quotes also um, from Isaiah sixty four six. You know uh, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who believe in Him, and so. Um, for the ones who love God, that this life is not all there is. It's very um, eschatological. It's um, this this revelation of wisdom that was before the world began is being revealed now to God's people through the foolishness of preaching and the simple words. But also that 
that this wisdom from God and that it's for the ones who love God, that is the church, that is the people of Israel, that is God's nations, God's people, that God is revealing to them that there is a place that God has prepared for them. And Paul quotes from Isaiah and says that, you know, that, that there is a place that God has made and that it is so beautiful, it is so amazing and so wonderful that it can't even be described with words. And so he says that God has prepared this place and that um, it's for those who love him. And then he's also, he makes a comparison that, you know, no one can know um, the spirit of inside a man except that man in the same way that no one knows the depths of God except the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God, such as the, the deep things of God. But um, I would say that if, you, if, if a Christian has the spirit, and particularly we receive that in baptism, if someone receives God's spirit, then I would say that, um, that um, all Christians have the ability to discern the things of God. Um, and he comes up to that at the end. He says... Um, that we uh, we don't have a spirit of this world, that we have a spirit that is from God. It's freely given to us. Um, we don't impart with human wisdom. We impart um, sp uh, spiritual truths that are taught by the spirit. And he keeps making this distinction um, in verses 14 and 15. He makes the distinctions that the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him. Um, and he does not he is not able to understand them because they are, are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. That isn't to say that a Christian can't be judged, but what it's talking about is that someone without the Spirit, um, I think what Paul is saying is that um, those who, who are not baptized, that don't have God's Spirit, they cannot judge a Christian on spiritual matters because they don't have the Spirit. Therefore, they cannot discern spiritual things. Um. And that there's this, yeah, that there is this constant line that Paul is drawing, almost like a line in the sand and saying, um, these people on this side, um, they don't have the Spirit of God. They cannot discern supernatural things. They cannot discern the mind of God. They don't think like God thinks. They don't have the mind of Christ. They, they, can't, even, they can't even approach God. And they see Jesus on the cross as folly, that it's basically laughable. And he makes the distinction over against those who have the mind of Christ, um, God's people, the church, those who are baptized, those who have received the Holy Spirit. They discern spiritual things that they, that we who have the spirit, we see Christ crucified. And this, like Paul, we, we say with Paul, we have decided to know nothing but Christ crucified, that that is the center of the gospel, that Jesus's death has paid for the sin Um you know, Romans 5.8, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So this is the center of the gospel. We can know the deep things of God. Um, we can discern the mind of God. We can think um, we want to be like Christ. We're being made in his image. And so we want to search the deep things of God. And therefore, um, we are able to understand and discern spiritual matters. And uh, non-Christians cannot judge us on these things, even though we can be judged on different things, but not, uh, but a non-Christian cannot judge us. And so Paul makes that distinction and he says that, um, um, but we, he kind of closes with this big statement. He says, um, for who, uh, for who has understood the mind of the Lord as to instruct him, quoting again from the old Testament, but we first person plural, um, have the, have the mind of Christ. We, um, the church, and so that's that's Paul and the church in Corinth in its original context, but by naturally by extension, that's that's all of God's people. That we have the mind of Christ. That um, by God's Spirit, we we can think like Christ. That we can bring every thought captive to Christ. We can um, follow after the mind of Christ, and we can um, therefore, because we receive that, therefore we can serve our community with the mind of Christ and be the hands of hands and feet of Jesus wherever we live, um, whether it's here in Gladstone or whether it's in Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney, uh, rural towns, wherever. Um, it's, it, it's missional, it's incarnational, it's, it's, um, it's beautiful. And so this is, this is the gospel that um, Christ uh, crucified is at the center of the gospel and those who have the spirit, they discern it and they say, Amen, and, and they, they receive the forgiveness of sins um, not at the cross, but in your baptism. So um, forgiveness of sin was one. Uh, ju your justification was one at the cross. 
um, you don't receive it there, you receive it in your baptism. That's where God comes to you. Um, God, uh, Christ is truly present in your baptism. He's uh, where the water and the word is washed over you and you are justified. You receive justification of your sin, may, being made righteous before God. Um, you receive the Holy Spirit in your baptism. You're being uh, made into Christ, like, uh, made uh, uh, conformed into the image of Christ, and your process of sanctification begins um, once you are baptized. And so, um, you have the Holy Spirit, and you start to begin to discern the spiritual matters. Uh, you mature, and so when Paul writes, he says that this wisdom that is before um, the ages, what that we that we uh, we impart this to the mature ones. That if you have the, the uh, the Holy Spirit, that you begin to mature and you recognize God's Word when it is read to you. You discern spiritual matters that you um, you grow in your faith day by day. And so, um, so this big sentence, but we have the mind of Christ. Um, that's uh, it's such a beautiful thing. And so, um, this the Spirit that now lives inside of you and in your if, through your baptism that um, because Jesus lives inside of you. Um, the Holy Spirit, you, you have access to God um, by the Spirit's power through Christ. You, you now know the Father and you have the mind of Christ. Um, that means that um, uh, you too can share the gospel with those in your community. So, um, yeah, but I suppose it's important to remember that uh, while it's good to study and to have theological degrees, that, um, you know, uh, the gospel doesn't need to be proclaimed in slick words or in... Um, uh, as much as I like a theological argument, as much as anybody, um, the gospel can be proclaimed in such simple language. It doesn't need to be uh, uh, puffed up with lots of knowledge. Just proclaiming that, you know, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, that at the center of the gospel, um, if you know anything about God, that resolve yourself like Paul and decide to know nothing but Christ crucified. And what does that mean um, for you? Uh, what does it mean that? Um, Jesus has died for sin, um, and that forgiveness is for you. And so that's the big questions that I'll be raising. Um, yeah, and so may God bless you and keep you this week. And uh, as you think about the, the things of God and think about this wisdom that God has imparted to the mature ones, the ones who receive it by grace and they understand it, they see these things. Um, what does it mean to receive the wisdom of God in the crucifying of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and what that means for you and uh, 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 being set free of all your sin and what it means for your, uh, for your neighbor that doesn't, um, you know, God doesn't need your good works. I think it was Luther who said this. Uh, God doesn't need your good works, but your neighbor does. And so um, that would be my message to you. So uh, God's peace to you. Um, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen.